you know, a dawn of a new age of man has come about now that we've been able to go into space. And we're starting to really look at uh, where we came from, truth and answers and visions of what could have been happening to us. And this brings about all the ancient alien theories. You know, clearly something happened to us some couple hundred thousand years ago. And all throughout the planet, life started out and seemed to start evolving at an accelerated rate. We can't find these missing links. And it all of a sudden seems to make this pretty radical jump. And if you believe in the stories of Inky, he uh, made us go 13 times faster 13 times as much. So in other words, we're evolving what would be one small evolutionary step. We're doing 13 steps. And instead of waiting 13,000 years, we're waiting a thousand years. And this acceleration can probably be seen by the way that mankind has evolved real rapidly. And once we came into the age of Aquarius to where old dogmas have been let loose you can really see a change throughout the world and people around the world are looking at this same information and starting to come up with this ancient alien idea and uh, like I say I've come up with this that uh, God is an alien and that I actually now have found proof after studying for, man, thousands, thousands of hours, looking at every single civilization and all that they have to tout, and even modern Gnostic things and emerald tablets, with all the new revelations that are coming out, and people coming up with uh, different concepts and ideas, and, you know, there's people that are looking at just megalithic stones, and people looking at ancient literature and and there's a bunch of different groups you know that if we could just put it all together you could really come up with something probably much much more amazing but God whenever he looks upon the face of the waters and this God that we find you know could easily be an alien from another planet and if we just had some type of proof it would really change things and change our ideals and maybe the way that we thought about what God would be and what we could actually be one day. And so through my thousands of hours of research here, I came up with a conclusion a long time ago and it seems to actually be the best thing that fits. It's almost like I came up with the M e equals MC square a long, long time ago and now I'm just realizing it. So here we go, dawning into a new age and looking at all the stars and the way that the people thought about things back then. And you can see reflections in that of how people used to worship the stars and the planets and the sun and the moon and the sun was a giver of life and all of these type of ideologies. And um, that's an ancient mythology or ideology of looking at things and there there is still truth in that for you know the, the God that created all is in everything but God is not from here let's see if we can do this as simple as possible the God that we all know exists the creator of all is not from here for after he got things going he created this Therefore, he's not from here. And if I'm not from your country, I'm known as an alien. I'm known as being not from there. I am a being not from there. And truly, this entity that we call God is not from here. Therefore, God is an alien. He is not from here. And if we start looking at things on that line, 
maybe we can get a little bit closer to perhaps what did pop us into evolution or perhaps just what we're supposed to end up doing our direction we act like we're supposed to go to heaven whenever we die that man's direction has been all over the planet but now it's to go to the heavens and we come blinded by it and we can't see the heavens sometimes they seem to go away but once we look again we keep trying to reach for it it's something it's a quest it's a destiny it's a destination it is our destiny something we're going to end up doing one way or another and the population of this planet is growing by leaps and bounds and we're going to have to do something surely shortly to rectify this and the answer is staring you in the face the whole time and you, you and everybody wants to be with God. They want to embrace it. They hope that whenever they die that they can go there, that this is the destination eventually. I mean, we somehow know it. It's inside of us that that is our destiny to end up being in the heavens with God. If we had an easier way, I think people that die right now would probably be shot into heaven. Back in the old days, they used to set carcasses, people that die, up on big, tall, up on top of mountains, places, structures, and let the birds pick them out and pick them apart. And these buzzards would fly way up into the sky, and this would take you up piece by piece up into heaven and these on eagle's wings on angel's wings concept kind of comes from that and the epic of gilgamesh where whenever he does see his own death he realizes that he turns into a winged creature uh, strangely at the end of that he's trapped and he doesn't know if he's actually going to be a hell bird or a heaven bird and the part that's knocked off on the end of the tablet shows that the heavens open up. And, of course, he wakes up with birds fluttering. So it ends up being that odd moment in a movie where you're like, was it a dream? And that could be our direction. It could be where we're going to go. You know, we're beings of light. And we have, we emit photons. You can look at auras on cameras and things and see that we have something to us, this life, this essence that makes us not normal. Something that sets us apart a little bit from the other creatures, that we are sentient, that we know what's going on, that we at least can think about what's going on and try to discern what everything's all about. People ponder this through their lives anytime they get an open chance to. Um, and it's something that the ancient Gnostics did for a, a lifetime, for a living in most cases, was to ponder the thoughts and the possibilities of everything. Mankind doing this has brought us to where we are now. We have incredible inventions. My grandfather remembers when cars were invented. He saw TV, radio. He saw flight. He saw people go from having to rely on horsepower to having horsepower in machines and equipment that brought about a new dawn and age of man that has set us on a path, one that Kennedy long ago saw, and so did the Soviet Union, and anybody of power realizes this destiny and this destination. It is expensive, it is costly, it is dangerous, and so it is, and so is all exploration. Walking across mountains, going to different places, always had a danger involved in it. You didn't know what was out there. There be monsters, and we are a people who take on our monsters. All of our old mythology show you how we overcome, 
and we have to overcome this idea of being on this little blue dot in the middle of nowhere and that that was our destiny our destiny is not here our destiny is to be with our father where is our father he is in the stars above we are to do this thing that now we're starting to see this star trek type idea where we go throughout the galaxy and beyond and help spurn life when we do it will we have some star trek directive where we're not supposed to you know mess with life and things i i would think that we'd have to think through that real hard because you don't want to make an alien species like maybe the movie alien that ends up being a bane to what could happen in the universe or a problem but we can't limit ourselves and we can't limit the universe you know now we talk about limiting mankind or not limiting mankind when we get to that point we'll talk about not limiting the galaxy and it'll be a different scale of things something that we should be reaching for and I really think we should be reaching for a whole lot more if the same amount of people that were reaching for God were actually reaching for God in the heavens like our destiny is we would get there a whole lot quicker. I know it's a it's a hard path and that we've only just seemed to be newborn to this idea that we can travel even to the stars, that um, the moon was a destination and then you can go to other planets that were there that it's similar to that idea, whether they're hab habitable or not, or you could even land a spaceship on them to look at what they have and knowledge we can get out of it see what type of resources we could get to set us upon an easier path towards exploring the heavens and getting farther through this and one day this beautiful earth of ours that um, encompasses everything that we've ever known will become a thought that we'll have like our beginnings and where we came from we'll always look at earth as being the great mother that started everything and we'll revere it back perhaps some of these bible stories and history type things will get lost over time but i don't think so i think we should carry it with us definitely and show that um, there's an evolution to the thought of man and mankind follows and we need to help spurn that in ourselves and get stronger we're just a baby we've got to really get going I mean you know we're a, a species with amnesia that's just now waking up and we are about to do great things great things for mankind's imagination is as vast as the heavens and as broad as the skies I mean we can if we can think it up we can do it just like in the Tower of Babel, whenever we unbabelize ourselves as mankind has done now, to where we're all working in unison as one cohesive unit, somewhat still separated, I believe the races should always still be separated and different types of cultures should be nurtured and held in great regard because of the differences and the uniqueness of it. No one wants the same flavored soup. But by unbabelizing ourselves that we have done now, Mankind has really grown into something that we now see can reach the stars, and we should go. We should reach.